Hello and welcome you all. Dear students, I am starting a new series for the subject microcontrollers. So, chapter number one is introduction to microcontrollers. In earlier subject, you might have studied microprocessor. There is a difference between microprocessor and microcontroller. Basically, microprocessor is a CPU, central processing unit, but it needs certain external peripheral components for functioning. This means what it means? Like, look, there is a generalized system hai, like PCs, hai, like laptops. We use the microprocessor. Use kar rahe hai. It requires external uh, things uh, to connect. These devices are called peripheral devices. For example, displays, uh, then keyboards, then uh, certain interrupt controller ICs, and so on. Whereas microcontroller, as, as the name indicates, micro means small, controller means it controls the functioning of certain system. So microcontroller is a small chip which is having all the required external devices inbuilt on a single chip. This is the basic difference between microprocessor and microcontroller. Now, see, I have told you very briefly that we are going to learn about the whole subject in detail in the detail. From the exam point of view, the expected question is compare microprocessor and microcontroller. As I have briefly told you, in microprocessor, we have to connect one CPU and the other external devices. Whereas, in case of microcontroller, everything is inbuilt. So, let us discuss the comparison between microprocessor and microcontroller. So, it depends on other chips for many functions, as I have explained to you all. Whereas, it is a single chip, microcontroller is a single chip having everything inbuilt. Then memory and input output ports need to connect externally. Just say, different types types of memory devices are like RAM, ROM, EEPROM, EEPROM, and input and output devices like keyboards and displays need to be connected externally in case of microprocessor. Whereas here, in case of microcontroller, everything is inbuilt. Because microcontroller is a particular application for a particular application. We are going to learn in detail about this later. Then third point is. It is suitable for process information in general computer system. It is suitable uh, to process the information for input and output devices. It means a particular application ke liye design. Karte then one or two bit manipulation in instructions are used for microprocessor. Whereas microcontroller needs many bit manipulation in instructions. Manipulation means making changes. Then memory address space for microprocessor is large and more data whereas for microcontroller memory address space is small and it uh, requires less data then memory map for data and code for data and code microprocessor makes use of single memory map whereas there is a separate memory map for data and code for the microcontroller then uh, as we discussed briefly it is uh, more flexible because we can external components hai, wo change kar sakte. we can replace one component by another having a different capacity and so on so flexibility is more in case of microprocessor where it is less in case of microcontroller because everything is inbuilt then hardware requirement is more naturally we are external components kar rahe hai. so hardware requirement is less in case of microcontroller then access time is more and in case of microcontroller, it is less. Why in, in case of microprocessor, it is more? Again, same reasons, because we need to access the external devices, peripheral devices. Then less multifunction pins are required for microprocessor, whereas more multifunction pins are required for microcontroller. And next difference is the clock rate is fast in case of microprocessor, whereas it is slow in case of microcontroller. Next is we will discuss some important features of 8051. From the exam point of view, a direct question can be expressed. List out the features of a microcontroller 8051. So I have made a list of some important features. So first is it has 8-bit CPU central processing unit. Then it is basically a 40-pin IC and DIP, dual in package IC. We will discuss the pin configuration in detail later on. Then it contains 4 KB, 4 kilobytes of internal ROM read only memory, which is on chip program memory, whereas it has 128 bytes of internal random access memory RAM, which is on chip data memory. 
then there are four register banks which are used to store the data then there are four 8-bit input and output ports again as i said we'll discuss the function of uh, each and every pin while studying the pin configuration in, in the same video then it has two 16-bit timers or counters and it makes use of five interrupts uh, then out of these five interrupts, two are external and three are internal. I have already written over here. Okay, so five interrupts in which two external and three internal interrupts are used. Then it has on chip clock oscillator. We can use this oscillator for some other application to generate the clock signals. Then it performs binary or decimal arithmetic. Then it is basically performing integrated Boolean processor. Uh, processing op operations which are required for some control applications then it has 16 bit program counter to access external data memory and it has 16 bit data pointer to access external uh, data memory first it, it is uh, program counter is used to access external code memory and second is for data memory so this is the list of some important features of edge zero five one now we will discuss the uh, functioning of each and every pin which is used for this uh, microcontroller 8051. This is the pin configuration for microcontroller IC 8051. From the exam point of view, we can expect the question related to functioning of any pin. This question can be asked for one or two marks. So I will explain uh, the function of each and every pin. This is basically dual package 40 pin IC. So pin number 1 to pin number 40 on both sides. As the name indicates, VCC here, uh, VCC is the supply voltage. You, you need to apply the voltage to this point and VSS is corresponding to the ground terminal. As shown in this diagram, the major pins are port 0, port 1, port 2 and port 3. We'll discuss first the functioning of each pin related to the port. So port 0. It is basically bi-directional which is 8-bit. It is 8-bit bi-directional input output port. That means it can be used as input as well as it can be used as output. When ones are written on pins, what is this port 0? P0.0, P0.1, like this. Same pins, uske under likha hai, AD0, AD1, matlab, same pins can be acting uh, acted as address pins. So, uh, the pin numbers are from P0.0 .0 to P0.7. So total 8 pins are uh, there. So it is 8-bit bi-directional input-output port. And when ones are written on these pins, matlab, har ek pin pe logic 1 hai, then these pins are used as high impedance inputs. It is a bit or byte accessible. Matlab, ek bit se access kar sakte ho yeah? or you can well access it by using 8 bits matlab, 1 byte or you can use a single bit that is 1 bit so it is a bit or byte accessible these pins are multiplexed means it can be used as data pins as well as address pins that's what I explained uh, ye bracket mein jo likha hai, these are cor uh, corresponding to the address pins AD0 to AD7 next is port 1 it is again 8 bit bidirectional input output port when one is written on each pin, then it is used as input. So, this port 1 hai, P1.0 to P1.7. So, pin number 1 to 8. This is related to port 1. Similar to the port 0, it is 8-bit bidirectional. And when one is written, it is acting as an input. It can sync or source. We know the meaning. Uh, source matlab, it is supplying something. Sync means it is receiving something. So it can sync or source four TTL inputs. Port 2. Yes, sign. Mainne isle draw kiya hai. Simplicity ke liye. Yeh jo explanation ho, same rahega port 2 ke liye. Matlab, yeh sub. It is a bit bidirectional input output port. Aur yeh one is used as input then. It can sync or source uh, four TTL inputs. One extra thing you need to mention in the answer that is functions, it functions as higher order address bus which is A8 to, um, A8 to A15. So it is functioning as higher order address bus. Explanation of port 3 is same as that of port 1. Some extra points are there. 
the basic explanation is it is again like port 1 and 2 it is again 8 bit bidirectional input output port then when ones are written it acts as input uh, refer this diagram port number 3 is from pin number 10 to pin number 17 and the notations are p3.0 to p3.7 some extra things are written that is rxd txd so apart from the basic explanation these are the different functions which are performed uh, by the pins of port number three. First is RXD, that is uh, the pin corresponding to P3.0, pin number 10. So it is serial input output port. Similarly, TXD, pin number 11, TXD is serial output port. So RXD is input port, serial input port and TXD is serial output port. Then INT0 and INT1, this pin number 12 and 13. INT stands for interrupt. As such, you jo hum abhi discuss kar rahe hai, both briefly discuss kar rahe hai. Uh, block diagram, uh, uh, architecture uh, learn karenge to us vakti detail mein learn karne wale hai hum Presently, INT0 and INT1, as I said, INT matlab interrupt. These are external interrupts, 0 and 1. So, any external interrupt uh, can be connected to these two pins. Then T0 and T1, that is pin number 14 and 15. These are timers or counters which are connected externally. Then WR bar, it is external, this pin, pin number 16. It is external data memory write strobe. Simple yaad rakhna hai. WR means write strobe. And RD, it is external data memory read strobe. Next pin is reset. Uh, reset is pin number 9. Uh, as the name indicates, if you supply high, that is logic high on this pin for two machine cycles, obviously when oscillator is running, so if you provide logic high for two machine cycles, then it resets the entire device. Then XTAL, XTAL basically stands for crystal, so XTAL1 and XTAL2, that is pin number uh, 19 and 18, so XTAL1, it is input to inverting oscillator amplifier and input to the internal clock operating circuit This I have told you before when we block diagram when we learn in detail then we will be clear that what is this in inverting oscillator amplifier and internal clock operating circuit and so on presently it is basically providing input to uh, these two things inverting oscillator amplifier and internal uh, clock operating circuit XTL2 it is output from inverting oscillator amplifier so you can connect a crystal uh, rather crystal oscillator between pin number 18 and 19 that is XTL1 and XTL2 then EA bar or VPP that is pin number 31 we already discussed the remaining pins so pin number 31 it must be held low to enable device to fetch code from external memory location means if you want to fetch extra code from some external memory location then this pin should be connected to ground it should be held low on the other hand if you connect it to VCC, that is, if you provide logic high, logic one, then the device fetches code from internal memory. The remaining pins are uh, pin number thirty, that is ALE or PROG. ALE is basically address latch enable, and PROG stands for program input, uh, program pulse input. See, whenever the device is reset or whenever it is switched on. It is always checked whether this pin, uh, any pin, is externally connected to zero or not. It is if it is externally connected to zero, then the device enters into flash programming mode. Again, we are going to discuss in detail what is this flash programming mode and so on. And if it is not connected to zero, then it is entering. The device is entering into the normal programming mode. In the normal operation. It is operating at the rate of 1 by 6 of the oscillating frequency. So this can be used uh, as an external clocking uh, to generate the external clocking signals. Then output pulse from this pin is used to latch low byte of address during an access to the external memory. Then last pin that is pin number 29 PSEN is program strobe enable. As the name indicates, it is basically the enabling pin 
to uh, read the stroke uh, from the external memory then it is activated twice during each machine cycle so dear student this is all about the functioning of uh, pins related to 8051 so that's it for today's session in the next session we'll discuss in detail the architectures of 8051 and so on so thank you thanks a lot for watching this video